Okay, so I had some questions on how to do problem 9-13. So let's go ahead and read the problem. Uh, compute both the traditional payback period and the discounted payback period for a project that costs $270,000 if it is expected to generate $75,000 per year for five years. R is 11%. And also should the project be purchased. So we're given the year and the cash flow and zero one that goes up to five years and it costs two hundred and seventy thousand so of course that's going to be negative because it's coming out of our pocket that's a cost and then we're going to have a positive cash flow of seventy five thousand dollars for the next five years okay and we can make this look nice, I guess, by we can uh, center it and put a little border around it. You can highlight the, the heading a nice color if we want to make it blue. Okay, all right, so what do we what do you want to find? <clears throat> we want to find A, the payback period, and B, the discounted payback period. And C, should the project be purchased? Okay. And for a solution, we'll just go ahead and copy this down and work with this. For part A. <clears throat> so the payback period is actually the simplest way to do a capital budget analysis. In fact, you have to have zero knowledge of finance in order to do this because it has no time value of money involved in it at all. You don't even consider R. Okay. Oh, by the way, up here, uh, I forgot to put R in here. So I'm going to click on nine, on row nine. I'm going to click on the number nine. I'm going to go insert. And I'm going to go ahead and put R is 11%. Okay. So we don't need R though for this problem. So basically, we're just going to calculate the running balance uh, at each year. So we're starting out, so I'm just going to equal this because that's what we're starting out with. And then I'm going to have a positive cash flow at the end of year one. So I'm going to go equals this, where I started with, plus my positive cash flow. So at the end of the year one, now I've paid back 75000 So now the running balance is only 195 So I'm going to do that for each year. And since I already have the, the formula here, I can just simply double click and it copies it down. And <clears throat> so so uh, so what year do I start having a positive cash flow? We can see between years three and four, the cash the cash flow is positive so my my payback period is three years and some fraction so i could say for my so for my payback it's equal to three years and then a fraction well at the end of the at the beginning of the third year i still owe forty five thousand dollars so the, the numerator in my fraction, I'm going to make it negative because this is negative and I want to make it positive. So a negative sign makes it positive. And then the, the amount of cash flow I'm going to get during the year is 75. So that's going to be my denominator. So it's going to be 3.6 years. So of course that's supposed to be years. So I'm going to change it to a number. So it's 3.6 years. Okay. Um, I could do it a simpler way. In this way, this shortcut method only works if all the cash flows are the same. I could just say it's simply equal to, again, I want to make this negative number of positive, so I'm going to go negative this, divided by the cash flow I'm going to get in all, all those years. So I could pick one of these. And that also comes up to 3.6 years. Okay, so those are the two ways I could calculate the payback period. Oh, by the way, I put... Uh, I put the wrong way here, one wrong, wrong way here, right? That's a payback period. Okay, so now let's do the discounted payback period. So I'm gonna I'm gonna copy these down. 
So the biz kind of payback period, we're not going to do the balance here. So I'm going to clear this out. I'm going to do the balance later. What I could do is I could just uh, drag this over here. I'm going to do something before I do the balance. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the present value of the cash flows. So the discounted the discounted payback period that takes into account the R and when it, or the required return. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the present value of each one of these cash flows discounted back using this R. Okay. So uh, so this is actually going to be so this is going to be the same again and. This is going to be equal to the present value. We're going to use this rate. Now this rate we want it to be absolute because I don't want it to move down when I copy the formula. So I'm going to hit F4. And the number of periods is 1. So I'm going to click on the 1. That can be relative so I don't have to hit F4. It's going to move down as I copy the formula. There's no payment. The cash flow is right here under... Uh, underneath all this and I can't I can't click on it so I'm gonna have to type in the cell address so it's B25 so I'm gonna type B25 and then I'm gonna close it so the cash flow is uh, 6757 now you notice up here I have it positive so this needs to be positive this isn't a negative cash flow so I gotta click on it again and to make a negative positive I'm gonna put a negative in the front so so year one discounted back to the present value of 67,000. So let's go ahead and do the other years by double clicking the formula. So as we go off further into the future, discounted back to the present, you're gonna, it's gonna be a smaller amount. Okay, so now I'm gonna fix this formula. This is equal to this. And it's gonna be simply the same thing I did here for this one. It's gonna be equal to this plus this. And I have my, I have my balances and this takes longer right this is going to take uh, a longer fraction okay so uh, because this this is not 75,000 any longer right so it's going to take a little bit longer to pay it off so now it's going to be equal to it's still three years because it because the count changes to three and some fraction of years because by the fourth year is positive, right? So it's going to be equal to three plus, again, we're going to go negative this divided by the amount of money I get on my fourth year. That's my new denominator. So okay, did I get the right one here? Looks like I have a formula error here. Let me check here. Something's not making sense. Uh, this equals this plus this. Copy it down. Okay, yeah, so it's, let me do this again. So it equals somewhere in the fourth year, right? I don't know what happened to my formula. It equals, I guess I probably forgot to copy the formula down. So it equals this. Um, plus what's in the numerator, but it's got to be negative to make it positive. Divided by the denominator is how much cash flow I got during that year. So again, this is also going to be years. So I'm going to copy this format. And that is that's C, right? So that's the answer to, to C, okay, or B. All right, for C, should the project be purchased? Okay. Uh, well, if it takes less than five years, the decision rule would be yes. So the answer would be yes. Okay, um, so that's it. That's how you do that. Hopefully that helped.